Jeremiah's call and commission uh, from, comes from Jeremiah, first chapter, verses 4 through 10. That is our lesson today from the book of Jeremiah. This is Sunday School Lesson, July 16, 2017. My name is Tony Miller. So in this quarter, our, our Sunday School Lesson, we have a uh, transition from these judges uh, to kings, uh, from the tabernacle to the temple, um, where the the people came uh, from the wilderness from Egypt into that promised land, and uh, and and where the the Shekinah glory of God dwelled with them in the tabernacle, and then there built the temple by Solomon. Uh, once they've moved into this promised land and once they've transitioned from these judges to the kings and Solomon builds this uh, temple for almighty God's Shekinah glory to rest where the Holy Spirit of God dwells. And then there's this, uh, the kingdoms of of God, the, the God's chosen people, they're divided and the northern tribes uh, are are lost because of they went into idolatry because of the uh, battle between uh, two leaders and those uh, lost tribes and northern tribes are gone into uh, captivity and destroyed and uh, by the Assyrian army and this com uh, promised people continues in sin and they continue in sin even from the period of judges through this period of kings uh, from that tabernacle all the way through the wilderness into this promised land. God told them to root out those gods from the people that they that they conquered in the promised land and they didn't do it. And he said that they those gods will be a stumbling block for them and they were. And this people continues in sin, chasing after the gods of the Baals and the Asherahs. And they continue in sin and the cycle of obedience and disobedience continues throughout this book, throughout the Old Testament, and especially through this lesson that we have on this prophet of uh, Jeremiah, that God calls a prophet to speak to his people. And he calls all of the prophets. Uh, God calls the uh, kings, or he sets up the kings and the judges in order to be those who, who uh, will rule for the people. But God calls the prophets themselves and and those people are the mouthpiece of almighty god the prophets speak to the people got the message that god has for them next slide so the prophets of almighty god so uh we have began in this lesson last week with this series of lessons on these prophets uh beginning with isaiah and uh in the next three weeks, we'll be studying God's prophets. And from Isaiah to now, we are fast forward 40 and 100 years from Isaiah to this man, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was called uh, the weeping prophet. And he was 30 years old when God called him to be the prophet, to speak to his people. And he was a prophet for 42 years, a prophet of Almighty God. And his prophet, uh, he was a prophet to Judah, which was the southern tribes. The southern uh, tribes of Almighty God the, of Israel. Next slide. So, our aim or our goal for this lesson is to observe what God called and empowered, uh, that God called and empowered Jeremiah, even before his birth, to establish that a call from God comes with the power to carry it out, and to stress that obeying God's call is not always easy but it will always be successful. Whatever God requires for us to do in that call, it will always be successful. That is our aim and that is our goal for this lesson. Next slide. So as I do with uh, most every lesson, I, I just think that uh, we should always try to make sure we have a clear understanding of the text. And in doing that, there is definitions that we need to have some clarity on. And I've provided for you a few of those uh, in this lesson as well. The first definition is prophets are prophets of Almighty God. Uh, in a general sense, a prophet is a person who speaks God's truths to others. The English word uh, uh, for a uh, word prophet comes from the Greek word prophets, which is almost the same word, which can mean one who speaks forth or advocate. 
Prophets are called seers because of their spiritual insight or ability to see the future. Prophets have the task of speaking God's word to the people. That is their primary job. They are instrumental in guiding the nation of Israel and establishing the church. Uh, that's even the New Testament church. God's household is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, which Christ himself is a chief cornerstone. Ephesians 2 and 20. Next slide. Uh, this slide, pre this word, predestination. Now, the, the word predestination is not in our text today, but this whole concept is. And, and I'm going to share a bit of that with you the next few slides, this whole concept of predestination, because I believe that it's important that we understand this term. Uh, if you think everything that happens, if you think everything happens for a reason, and we have no control over our futures, then you believe in predestination. In religious term, predestination is a belief that everything that happens has already been determined by God. He's got a master plan and there's no deviating from it. It's kind of de uh, depressing and extreme worldview that doesn't have much room for making personal choices. Predestination is related to the concept of omniscience mean that God knows everything, but if you're a strong believer in free will, then you probably hate this whole idea of predestination. It's kind of a confusing term, and uh, I'm still hoping to untangle it for you as we move forward. Next slide. So God chooses. He is in control. That is a fact, and that is something we have to wrap our head around. The most common objection to the doctrine of predestination is that it's not fair it's unfair why would god choose certain individuals and not others the important thing to remember is that no one deserves to be saved we have all sinned uh, romans 3 23 and fall short of the glory of god and we are all uh worthy of external punishment the wage of sin is death right as a result god would be perfectly just in allowing us all to spend eternity in hell. However, God chooses to save some of us. He's not being unfair to those who are not chosen because they are receiving what they deserve. God's choosing to be gracious to some is not unfair to others. No one deserves anything from God. Therefore, no one can object if he does not receive anything from God. You know, we we see folks who are we think are prospering or they have more than us and the preachers have bigger churches than other preachers or people have bigger careers or better family members or whatever. The favor is not fair. Favor ain't fair, but God's in control. He chooses. Next slide. Uh, next word. Uh, defi uh, definition. Sanctified. Um, the word sanctification is related to the word saint. Both words have to do with holiness. To sanctify, something is a set apart for speci special use. To sanctify a person is to make him holy. We are Christians and we become sanctified. God, Holy Spirit now dwells within us. And then this activity of making us clean or making us holy or a holy acceptable to God is the work of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us that that is the only way that we become sanctified is not by our own strength and by our own abilities that we don't have that power in order to be uh, because we're just filthy rags in the sight of Almighty God next slide nations so the definition of nation is a nation is a territory or country as political entity or a grouping of people who share real or imagined common history, culture, language, or ethnic origin, often possessing or seeking its own government. So this whole concept of uh, nation and nations uh, that this this man, Jeremiah, this, this prophet of Almighty God, that he's called not just to the nation of Israel, not just to the Israelites that he's called to the world and that is the the same as Jesus is called to the nations so this whole concept of nations is thus next slide anointed 
Uh, so we constantly are we we're commonly understand this word of anointing when one is has their head anointed with oil and it is this uh, we we have in churches and uh, and there's another meaning for this word anointed is the chosen one. The Bible says that Jesus was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit to spread the good news and to free those who have been held captive by sin. So we are anointed also by being chosen by God. And uh, that is a dual meaning for this word anointed. Next slide. Purpose. I guess everybody seeks to find this. And this 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 purpose is the reason for which we were uh, something is done or, or where, why we were born or, we or why we were created. Uh, this purpose is what something that why we exist. And that's what we all want, all want to know. What is our purpose? What is our aim? What is our intention? What is our goal? What do we have to do in this life? That is this word purpose. Next slide. So our 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 lesson today starts in the fourth verse of uh this first chapter of the book of jeremiah so i decided i think it's important that i share with you the first three verses of this uh chapter uh and this introduction to this man uh uh jeremiah that uh that this prophet was a prophet through five kings of judah uh again chapter one verses one through three the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, uh, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of jo uh, Josiah, the son of the king of the, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign, and it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, Zedekiah the son of Josiah, the king of Judah unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So this this period expansion of of this uh this prophet is through five kings. Now here we only mention three of the kings in the first three verses, but Jeho uh Johaz and uh Jacona are are omitted because each of these kings reigned only three months. But he did reign through this period of five kings, and and uh, and again God called him to be uh, this man who was going to give God's word to this people, and it took him all the way to the point where their sins continued into the point that they were gone into captivity into Babylon, and that is a span of this message. That is a span of this this pro prophetic message that this man uh, Jeremiah has for his people. So the setting of this lesson, so Jeremiah is God's prophet. God chose to send a message to his chosen people and the, and the nations as well. God's people are, are in idolatry as uh, they have been in for so many years. Uh, God chose Jeremiah for this service that he actually picked the chosen man. He said he chose him before uh, he was born. Uh, God gave Jeremiah a message to deliver. And his message was re repent, turn back to God, that God has a judgment on you if you don't. And if you turn back to God, God has blessings for you. So Jeremiah lived through the last days of the southern kingdom of Judah, and he consistently warns of an impending disaster brought about by the nation's neglect of true religion. It's turning to pagan practices and social injustice and we saw that social injustice in the in the book of isaiah where they they felt because they were this chosen people that they could treat the 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 widows and orphans and those who are less than you know uh, uh worse because they were this chosen uh, people of almighty god and this blind uh trust in this covenant relationship with god is a delusional and are these false prophets who are who are sending this message of peace that they believe because they were this chosen people of God and 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 even though their God sent them prophets, other folks are saying, no, we got this temple, we're 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 the chosen people of God. Don't worry about what the what these folks have to say. But no one listens to the prophet. His heart is broken, 
and he argues with God about his seemingly impossible mission to make uh, this people listen to him. That is the setting of this lesson. Next slide. So an introduction to Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. This man suffered as no other biblical character save the son of God, Jesus. Some scholars have documented aspects of Jeremiah, Jeremiah's public ministry scene that uh, of agony with three distinct aspects of his personal suffering being uh, Jeremiah experienced the agony of his message of judgment. He saw clearly the vision of total destruction of the land he loved. He saw the suffering of men, women, and children, and mostly he was drained each time he shared those dire visions with his audience. The people he loved, the people he knew were standing on the brink of national destruction, and they refused to listen. The men of his own hometown even plotted to kill him. And that is this uh, lesson, that is this message that, that he has. And, uh, and it's obviously a, a very heavy burden that he has uh, to carry. Next slide. So why the weeping prophet? So our, our lesson is only in chapter uh, one. But, I, but in order for us to understand this whole concept of this weeping prophet, other than what I just mentioned to you, that I decided to give you a, a, a portion uh, of this whole concept coming from chapter 9, verses 10 through 16. And I'll share this with you as, uh, as coming from the words of Jeremiah. Verse 10, for the mountains, I will take up a weeping and wailing. And for the inhabitants of the wilderness, a lamentation because they are all, they are burned up so that no one can pass through them. Neither can men hear the voice of cattle, both the fowl and the heavens and the beasts are fled. They are gone. And God says, I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Who is the wise man? that may understand this. Who is he whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken, that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth and is burned up like the wilderness that none passeth through. And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein. But have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balaam's, those of the gods, which their fathers taught them, which they, those fathers followed after the, those gods as over and over and over again. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. In verse 16, And I will scatter them among the heathens, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. And that is the prophecy that this man, this prophet of Almighty God, Jeremiah gives to his people, but none wants to hear this. Next slide. So this brings us to our our lesson today, uh, verse beginning at verse four, Jeremiah's call and commission, chapter one, verse four. Uh, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. So this uh, I, I've extracted the first verse as a, as a the uh, independent uh, verse in itself because here God speaks to this one Jeremiah. That that is this thing he calls him. He calls him from among his people. God speaks to those who take time to listen. God speaks to us if we take time to listen, and uh, and he listens to those who takes time to pray. So parenthetically, I'm adding this into you to hopefully you get some understanding and gleam some. Just like this man had to listen, God was speaking to them, and God speaks to us. If we take time to listen. Next slide. Uh, Jeremiah's call and commission, chapter 
1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So I, I the definitions that I, I gave you prior to this, a majority of them come from this one uh, verse of, of scripture here that uh, before I formed thee in the belly, belly that is this whole concept of uh, predestination that, that God knew before you were even considered to be a thought in your that before your parents met before your parents were born before the foundations of earth god knew you and god formed you he knew who you were and he had a plan for you and and before thou camest out of the womb he had it set up for you to do and this word sanctified sanctified is that he set you apart that he set this man apart that he had a plan that he knew he was going to call him to do a certain thing and he ordained him that means he anointed him with this special power with the ability to be able to accomplish that and he became this prophet from almighty god he became the messenger of almighty god and he was going to speak to not just god's people not just the nation of israel but all the nations and that is the commission that is jeremiah's call and commission that god has for him that i knew you before i formed you in your mother's womb before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my spokesman to the world. And, and that is also our charge as well as, as servants of the most high God, of servants of almighty God, of so servants of Jehovah, servants of Yahweh. We are called also, we have the great commission that we are supposed to go into the byways and highways and make disciples that we're supposed to go and spread the word of almighty god that we were called and we were selected before we were born before we come out of our mother's womb that we were called and god knew that we were going to accept that call and become servants of him and that is that predestination concept and our goal is to serve God because we were called and he ordains us and he calls us and he puts the words in our mouth that we would go into the nations to speak to the people about this Jesus, about salvation. That if we believe and trust in Jesus, that we have an eternal resting place with almighty God throughout eternity. And that is the gospel message as well. Next slide. Jeremiah's call and commission. Chapter one, verse six. And then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak for I am only a young man. So uh, the rest of these uh, uh, verses, I'm going to uh, use them out of the Amplified version. Uh, I just think that it gives me a little bit more clarity for us. And it's now this man, uh, uh, Jeremiah, uh, uh, God is calling him to be this prophet to to speak to his people and and here he is this this young man and and he feels i'm just i'm young i'm still a young man and uh and uh and uh, and he has doubts about his ability to do what what god says and he doesn't even know if he can speak well enough in order to convey the message that god has for him but he's 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 getting these uh excuses next line Jeremiah's call and commission, chapter one, verse seven, again in the Amplified. But the Lord said unto me, do not say that I am only a young man, because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. So God says this to this uh, man, Jeremiah, as he, as he has this new commission that he has this call on his life and God has some work for him to, to do. He says, uh, say not that I am too young or in some of our cases that we're too old. Uh, have no fear because I am with you. If God calls you to do something and God is with you and he says that whatever I command you, you shall speak and it shall be effective. Next slide, please. So I provided for you a commentary on this uh, chapter uh, one verse seven uh, this commentary uh, God 
refuses to accept his excuses and renews his commission to him to execute the prophetic office. And thus God refuses to accept the excuse of Moses uh, made like uh, seemingly on a similar occasion, which we uh, this when you read that it reeks right of the, the same um, the excuse that that Moses had when he, he told God the same thing uh, back in Exodus. First, uh, number two, thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. This is not so much as a command as a promise as to say that I will enable thee, notwithstanding thy youth, to go with prosper boldness, proper boldness to those whom I send thee to declare my commands with that dignity and precision wherewith thou ought to be uttered. That is a commentary here on verse 7. Next slide. Jeremiah's call and commission, chapter 1, verse 8. And God says, Do not be afraid of them for their hostile faces, for I am with you always to protect you and to deliver you, says the Lord. So it's just like for us when we go and, 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 and we, we have this on our hearts to speak to someone that may be uh, they're homeless or maybe they're uh, they're there's someone that does not look lovely and someone that does not uh, look like the norm and, and we we are they're in the prostitution or drug abuse or or they're having some other calamities in their life and and and, and we we he God says here don't be afraid of them for their hostile faces that our job is that we are supposed to still go he says don't be afraid for I am with you when you go to witness for almighty God, you go because he says, don't be afraid. I will rescue you. I'll deliver you. I'll protect you. <coughs> I will be with you. And what you do will be successful. That is the word of God. Next slide. Jeremiah's call and commission chapter one, verse nine, again in the Amplified. And then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, hear me, or behold and hear me the same. I have put my words in your mouth. Sounds like Isaiah, doesn't it? Uh, and the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said unto me, I will put my words in your mouth. God's word is amazing, isn't it? Not? Next slide. So commentary on uh, chapter one, verse nine, uh, El Elcott's uh, commentary that they are not our words, right? The symbolic act seems to imply something like a, a waking vision, like that of Isaiah, which I, I just mentioned that I, I taught in the last lesson that we spoke, that we shared with Isaiah. The act itself reminds us of the live coal laid upon the prophet's mouth as uh, they're recorded. The hand of the Lord as in Ezekiel and elsewhere was received the symbol of special influence of the spirit of the Lord. And here, as in the case of Isaiah, the act implied the gift of new powers that now when he put this coal in his mouth, that he now he has some new powers by this thought or utterance that he has the ability that the words which a prophet speaks like those which were to be spoken by the apostles of Christ. They are not his own words. But those put on, upon his heart, put into his heart by the spirit of the father. So the finger of God in Luke uh, 11 and 20 answers to the spirit of God. So now God, as this action that he does by touching his mouth or by the, what he did with Isaiah, by put, putting the live coal that he gave them uh, some new powers that he gave them new words it's like the man of god who stands behind the sacred desk he speaks the powers he speaks the words of almighty god and that's this new anointing that he has now this uh that is this commission this call and commission that this man jeremiah now has next slide jeremiah's call and commission chapter 1 verse 10 and this is the last verse of our lesson and see i've appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and to break down and to destroy and to overturn and to build and to plant. 
See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, destroy and to throw down. But he also says to build and to plant. Next slide. So I, I've given you a commentary here on this last verse. Jeremiah's call and commission. Um, verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdom, not as a prince, but as a prophet over them to prophesy things concerning them, whether good or evil, which should certainly come to pass as he predicted to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, that is to foretell that which the kingdom and the nation should be rooted out as a tree or a plant that is plucked up by its roots and that such and one should be pulled and thrown down and destroyed as a building is. The whole may be understood of the destruction of the Jews by Nebuchadnezzar of their temple, city and nations through the Targum and Jarchi interpret all this of the Gentiles only and the following to build and to plant of the house of Israel which may be applied to the building of the temple and the planting of the Jews in their own land and after the return from captivity which Jeremiah prophesies this is this this whole concept of, of building and uh, and rebuilding and plucking down God gives this uh, this vision to this Jeremiah. Next slide. So what happens next? Uh, we read the rest of the book of, on our own, and we should. Uh, and it's an incredible read. Trust me, it is very exciting. Uh, Jeremiah experienced continual opposition from both political and religious leaders of Judah. The, the occasion that prompted some of this opposition was an address or perhaps a series of address concerning the temple and the services that were being conducted uh, in it. Because of the formal character of these services and their failure to change the, pe the spiritual lives of the people, Jeremiah saw something very drastic, uh, saw that something very drastic should have been have to be done in order to bring these people to their senses. And we notice that in, in the book of Isaiah that he said that they had this this form of godliness that they were that they were going through these motions, but they weren't really, really doing what God wanted them to do. The people were putting their trust in the temple, feeling certain that as long as it remained in the midst, no evil would befall them for the people to understand that the true meaning of religion consists in a change from within rather than conforming to some external requirements or some practice or rituals that Jeremiah felt that it was necessary to undermine the trust that people had placed in these eternal objects. Therefore, the prophet declared that the day was coming when the temple would be destroyed, that the Ark of the Covenant that would be taken away, that the nation that called itself the chosen of Yahweh, the chosen of Almighty God will be taken into captivity. And these statements aroused the anger of the priest and the king Jehoiakim. And Jeremiah was charged with treason and would probably have been put to death had not some of his friends succeeded in hiding him until the wrath of his enemies had subsided. And, and that is this whole drama that this, this weeping prophet has, that he has uh, a message to these people of trying to get them to change from their ways and trying to get them to turn back to God, recognizing that that they have this, they go through these gyrations as being uh, servant, uh, children of God. They believing that because they're the chosen ones that, that God's always got them in, and in thousands of years God has, has, has protected them and God, a thousand years that they've turned back to God and God's have answered their prayers and they believe that it's going to continue to go forever, but God is it's going to show them that he's going to have uh, that is that he is uh, long suffering, but his long suffering is going to end and they will be gone into captivity under the Babylonians and uh, and for 70 years. But then again, as he says in this prophecy that he said that he will bring them back, that he will replant them. And that is the rebuilding of the temple 
the, the temple after the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. Next slide. So what have you learned by this study? Uh, I, I want to share these things with you and I hope that you've learned something uh, as we just uh, made this traverse through this uh, first chapter of the book of, of Jeremiah that again only the first 10 verses uh, we have more there that but these are the ones that we're sharing here that God is in control and he has a plan for Jeremiah and uh, for us as well that God has a plan for us that our, that our lives there we just don't go through this birth and 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 living and dying that God has a plan for us as well that we were chosen to a particular service by God before we were born just like Jeremiah was that God knew us before we were born and he had a plan for us whether that plan for us to just be servants of him to accept the salvation through Jesus who was going to who became a salvation for all mankind that he is salvation for all mankind that, that God has a plan for us whether that plan is is for us to be fathers or children or our our our, our business people our students or our uh, are in ministry, whether it's singing or our teaching or preaching or our serving uh, or sharing, um, God has a plan for us, be and, he, and he, we have that before we were born. That God speaks to us all. If we're listening, you know, we always want to know that what is our purpose? What is our purpose? But if we we listen, God speaks to us in a still, still small voice. If we listen, if we and that listening happens through our prayers as well, that we pray and God speaks to us when we're speaking to him. For this purpose, we have been sanctified. That whatever that purpose that God has for you, whatever that duty that God has for you, whatever that life lesson, whatever that life journey that he has for you, that he's ordained you. That he is that I mean he has anointed you that he's giving you the ability to be successful and that your favor from God is different from others that that yeah that maybe your, your church or your or your 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 friends or your your life is 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 big and brilliant and some folks of your family members are not or maybe some other family members are are bigger and yours are not that that this favor is not fair but God is in control and God has a plan for it all and whatever he has for you is what you're going to get but don't fear or doubt that you're an inadequate to accomplish the task that God has for you because if God has God is for you who can be against you right that you are always adequate to accomplish the task that God has for you then and if you go down that route that God will be with you and stand by you God will be with you always even when you don't feel like it we see the the image of the footprints in the stand in the sand when we think God is not not with us then we turn behind and we see that yes he was carrying us through this period that 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 God will always be with us. We be with us. That He will give you the words to say, even when you feel that I'm over my head. I'm not. I'm in the circumstances that I don't understand. I'm not familiar with this. That 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 He's called you to a certain task. He's called you to a ministry. He's called you to to a job. He's called you to to study and to and to be something that that you don't feel that you're even adequate or capable of. But but He will always give you the words to say. He will always give you the words to 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 to. To be able to fulfill the task that he's given you and whatever God's called you to do in this life, you will be successful because God is with us. Whatever he calls us to do, we will always be successful because there is no one greater than him, right? That God is control. God has it. That if you add God to any of the circumstances of your life, you add God to any of the calamities in your life, you got add God to any of the the trials and tribulations of your life that you have uh, success that 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 we have not because we ask not but if we ask we 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 get we and, and God is on our side and not as God is not against us and God is a loving God and God has a call for us and God has a call for Jeremiah and he has a commission and God has a call for us and his commission on our life too all we have to do is listen to what he has for us and trust that he will take us to our destiny and he will give us all that we need in order to fulfill the task that he has before us. And that is our lesson. Thank you so much.